so a few things have happened in Florida, my former home state. I miss you, Florida. Um, anyway, so the marijuana companies mounted this very big effort to get legislators to try to like kill the hemp industry and truly have led the way. Uh, try to kill the hemp industry. They tried it last year. It was a complete kill, by the way. It was, Let's it be was, clear. It was the bill bad. that was proposed would have wiped out hemp in Florida. It was bad. Yeah. And um, thank God for a last minute veto from DeSantis. I mean, you never want to end up like needing a veto because you just don't know which way that's going to go. Yeah. But he does not love the marijuana industry in Florida. And the marijuana industry has attempted to legalize recreational marijuana on more than one occasion, and they're trying it again this year. So uh, let's be clear here. This is this is sort of backed by True Leave. True Leave is is interesting. They are at this point probably what I would consider to be the largest in the U.S. and the most powerful, or at in, least in terms the of one we know the most about. In terms of the actual marijuana industry and and being an MSO, uh, they are. Yeah, I mean, it, that's true. The, the, they're the largest that's sort of publicly visible. Yes. There may be larger sort of conglomerates behind the scenes, but TrueLeave is the one that is most public and most recognizable. So as of, I, from what I've seen as of 2024, uh, TrueLeave has about 140 dispensaries in Florida, which is, my understanding is the next closest one isn't even close to that. In Florida. Correct, in Florida. And that doesn't include all the dispensaries they have in other states. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And TrueLeaf is publicly traded, right? Yes. Yeah. Did you buy stock? No. <laughs> I'm short in that one. So on the ballot. This now, now let's be clear. Their recreational initiative does not allow people to grow. Correct. Uh, what other limitations does it have that are super fun? Well, it doesn't allow for new, it doesn't require new licenses. Meaning that the people who have existing medical marijuana monopoly licenses get to keep them, no. immediately convert to REC, and they, the state doesn't actually have to issue any new licenses. Maybe I should buy stock and in And there's company. no home growth. Woo. Yeah, that makes me want to buy stock in them. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and this is something that's becoming very common that we're seeing throughout marijuana. We aren't seeing it in hemp. Uh, so in the marijuana industry, you're getting the larger companies that are essentially shutting down all of the small players. They also don't like home grows because that cuts into That's their money. competition. Yeah, a literal home grow, six plants, and they view that as a threat and won't allow it. That would be like restaurants banning or getting growing tomatoes at home banned. Or basil. Yeah. <laughs> right? You can't grow your own basil because we're going to be the ones selling it to you. Because you have to come to the restaurant to get it. Yeah, you want basil, you come to us. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's crazy. That's a monopoly. That's monopoly. Yes. So on the so Florida changed. I don't remember how many years ago it was, but now for a ballot initiative to pass in Florida, it has sixty percent of the voters, not fifty, not fifty one percent, sixty percent of the voters have to agree. I saw that they had to get nine hundred thousand signatures to get it on the ballot. That's. That's a lot of signatures. It's a lot of signatures. I mean, I had people that knocked on my door to sign petitions and stuff like that. So, yeah, but, I mean, when you have this kind of money, you can do a lot of stuff. Like start a new organization called Smart and Safe Florida. I mean, these are very skilled people. They're very smart. I remember years ago working on a ballot, a ballot initiative in California, and we had to meet with the governor's office because what's really important is like what you call a ballot initiative, right? People go down the ballot and they start with the president and then they start losing steam, right? By the time they get to judges and all that, nobody cares. Yeah, this should be called No Home Grow, Florida. <laughs> so they started this association. I don't association know what's smart and what's safe about it. And they're doing all these campaigns and all this PR and all this marketing to convince people that if they don't vote for this in Florida, then there's going to be marijuana that's laced with all kinds of bad things and fentanyl and all that. And the only thing that will save Florida is that ballot initiative. I love how they're talking about legalization and they're talking about drug arrests, but they're also making home grows illegal, illegal and people will be arrested for that. Yes. And also so explain that to me. I'm confused. No, there's no explanation because this is, I think what you, I think the term, Lewis, correct me if I'm wrong. The term is self-serving. Is that it? Serving one's own interests often in disregard of the truth for the interests of others. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This whole thing is self-serving. So they start smart and safe Florida. What's smart and safe about another monopoly getting another piece of the pie? 
Yeah. And they act like them having a hold on the market is going to eliminate the illicit market. And, you know, depending on what they price their stuff at, the illicit market might still be a better place to, for people to get their stuff. And in all of this where they try to give you the facts, did you guys watch the facts video that she did? Mm -mm. Oh, it's cringe inducing. It, it's, you have to watch it just for yourself. It's cringe inducing. Millions of Floridians use marijuana. It's a fact. Most Americans have access to legal marijuana that is regulated and tested for safety, but not Florida. Most Florida marijuana is illegal, produced by criminals and can be laced with dangerous drugs like fentanyl. Amendment 3 gives adults access to legal, safe marijuana. Hi, I'm Peter Griffin. You know, I grew up in this town. Florida. Needs a moral, upstanding school board president, someone we can trust. Well, a lot of nasty things have been said during this campaign. Marijuana. But anyway, so they talk about how if the, the marijuana. marijuana market is not allowed to go recreational, Florida will suffer. The only ones that will suffer are the people trying to expand their monopoly. So this is this is the play, and this is the, the play we're seeing in other states, too, where you've got sort of this medical, and this is what they're trying to do in Texas, right? They're trying to create this medical program, lock it in, prevent the number of licenses, like they've done in Texas. There's only three in Texas, right? So lock everything down, get it medical, get it sort of in with a Trojan horse, and wipe everything out, and then be like, oh, we're going recreational, but... You can't grow at home. There's no other competitors, blah, 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 blah. And guess what? You end up in this highly corrupt monopoly. And, you know, you've got companies in Texas that are literally testing their own products and reporting their own test results to themselves. This is so, madness. You know, Florida this is complete started, madness. When Florida's medical program started out, it was fully vertical like it is in Texas. And then somebody said, wait a minute. You can't be testing your own stuff. <laughs> and they, they moved out the testing part. So, and we're picking on True Leave because, you know, that's, that's who's behind most of this. Uh, per the DEA, any drugs not purchased or obtained from a licensed and accredited medical facility are illegal, dangerous, and potentially lethal. Man, when you drag out a word like lethal, right? And basically what they're doing is that they're um, appropriating language that the DEA used to support their argument, which again, super clever because this safe and smart, smart and safe Florida website makes it look like they actually give a shit yeah. about people. Yep. Yeah. I'm, if I'm a parent, you know, which I am and I see this and it says, oh, you know, it looks like they're trying to do something right. This is highly, highly corrupt and just dis disingenuous. Super disingenuous. It is a mess and it's, it's the point where it's kind of sickening to be honest. Also, I just want to talk about criminal justice and legal issues, right? There's nothing in here about ethics or morality and the fact that they are okay shutting down a multi-billion dollar industry in Florida so they can have their way. This is to serve their shareholders. This yes. is not for the people of Florida. This isn't for anybody but the shareholders of that company that they yes. are serving. Yes. So from that standpoint, buy their stock, right? Like, hey, why not? They're doing a great job. <laughs> But this is this is not what if this you is wanna about. if you like buying the stock from feminist. morally corrupt and unethical companies, then absolutely buy their stock. But if you have some kind of moral standard or code or, you know, you like the underdog, then don't buy their stock and visit a hemp store instead. So what does that bill actually do? So the ballot initiative would legalize recreational marijuana and to make it super easy you don't, they, the state doesn't have to issue any new licenses, so they don't have to figure out how to waste time, you know, figuring out you new applications, new you know, in case somebody else wanted to get in the market. But does it also get rid of hemp? No, that oh. was a different, that was a different um, initiative. That was on the legislative side. That one got vetoed. Right. That's okay. the one that got vetoed. I wasn't vetoed. sure if it was also tied in. You said like, oh, it's tied in, in that they're behind the all of it. Oh. <laughs> it's like a master plan. You know, who was the guy from the movie, you know, that he, Austin Powers? Wasn't that the... Dr. He, Evil. Dr. Evil. This is like a Dr. Evil plan. I have a plan. And they, like, covered all the bases and, like, you know, figured it out and whatever. So, super disingenuous. I love Florida. I hate the fact that these people are just, you know, trying to take over Florida. And I hope DeSantis wins 
in that the ballot initiative doesn't pass because it will just give them more strength and energy to try to crush the hemp industry. Yeah. Yeah, TrueLeave is a very big opponent of ours right now. They they are involved in Texas in some way. We haven't been able to sort of nail it down as to how or why, but we do know they're involved in Texas right now and they are trying to make things happen here. Yeah. Which is terrifying because any market they go into, they just completely corrupt it. Yeah. Yeah. They 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 are not good people. Uh, so, yeah, that's our opinion on sort of what's going on in Florida right now. True leave sort of making a mess of things as always and trying to make it look like they're doing the right thing for the people. But it's just they're just serving the shareholders. They don't care about the people. So happy hunting as always. Love you guys. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you in the next video. Do we want to name True Leave in the opening or just say we want to talk about cannabis in Florida? Oh, this is about True Leave. Okay. Okie dokie.